In Wing Chun Kung Fu, we'll see a lot of people do the Tan Sao and, and, and simultaneously striking. And what a lot of people say to me is, upon doing the Tan Sao, when I go into trap, I'm trying to trap while I'm sparring, I'm free sparring, and I can't get my trap in. You don't look for the trap, the trap just happens. And you could call it trapping, you could call it pinning, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> but the, what I, the way I look at it is I want to clear the line. I'm clearing the line for my next strike. I'm not concerned about trapping, I'm not concerned about pinning. If it happens during the fight, okay, it happens. But I'm not going into the fight looking for the traps. Alright, another thing is when we're doing Tan Sao, okay, in, in Wing Chun Kung Fu when we're practicing, and we're here, okay, in a real life situation, this is not common. You, you, if you look at any street fight on YouTube, you, you're not going to see the begging hand, the opening hand, and someone like this. Very calmly in a perfect, it, it's going to be like this, because your natural reaction is automatically going to take over years and years of training. It's just going to happen that way. And the best way I can describe that, if someone takes a ball and they, they yell your name, you turn around. As you turn around, this ball is coming at you. You're not going to go into a tan sal position. You're not going to go into a bonk sal. Your, your, your natural reaction is automatically going to take over, okay? Because we're, we are, we're primitive. And although we want to refine and um, uh, fool ourselves into thinking we're perfectionists with techniques, our natural uh, primitive features, if you want to call them, that are already imprinted or in our mind are going to take over. It's just going to happen that way. So what you want to do is utilize your training and your practice to be more practical for realistic uh, situations so that you can combine both your technique and your primitive mode, if you want to look at it that way. So uh, same thing here, Tansa with the simultaneous strike. We are, we're not going to block and then strike. We're doing everything together, okay? If someone were to throw a punch at me or a ball or something like that, my natural instinct is to be here, okay? So, I'm not in this position. The, the purpose of that is still the same. I'm blocking. I'm defending myself against a strike. So, instead of just going from this position here with the, with the traditional Wing Chun Kung Fu, for instance, with our Tan Sao, we're in this position here. Now, when we're talking about trapping and pinning and all that other stuff, obstructions, you just want to clear the line. Once we clear the line, now we can come in with another strike. So we're here to camp and we clear the line. One, two, three. One, we're here. We're blocking. We're simultaneously striking. We're obstructing. We're clearing the obstruction, clearing the line, and then utilizing our, our, our next weapon here, closest target, um, like in a Kempo system. Okay? Closest weapon, closest target. So we're here, here. Now, what is the most logical sequence of events that should follow? Okay, yeah, I can headbutt, but my, my body's in a perfect position just to come in and drive with the elbow. So we're here, here, bam. Okay, so once we're here, okay, we change this tonsil out of something a little bit more natural. Everything stays the same. We clear the obstruction, we clear the line. And we utilize our strike, closest weapon, closest target. Okay, in this situation, the face or the nose, the bridge of the nose, and the elbow. So, just something to consider.